Yo, are we still in a bull run? Are we still going to see that crazy DeFi summer that everybody's dreaming of where we have a crazy all season that makes everybody rich? Or have we already peaked, the party's over, and now we're entering a multi-year bear market? This, my friends, is the question of the hour. And I know especially a lot of retailers are completely puzzled right now. They don't know what they should do, right? Should you double down on your Dogecoin? Should you put everything into Bitcoin? Should you just sell everything and apply for McDonald's? What should you do right now? Should you stack up Shiba Inu? Guys, questions over questions. And this video is not here to tell you what you should do with your portfolio. It's not here to tell you what you should buy or sell. This is purely here to share my personal views on the current space. I've gone through the cycle of 2017, 2018, 2019. I sticked around. I'm all in crypto since four years, more than four years now, actually, with my entire money. So I have gone through this and I see a lot of similarities to previous cycles. So that's why I want to make this video today. On top of that, I'm also going to share a few altcoins that I'm stacking right now because I think they're a steal right now. And if you enjoy that and appreciate that, please support me by sharing this video, subscribing to my YouTube channel if you haven't yet. I know actually you're, a lot of guys have not subscribed to my channel. I can see that in the back end. So please do that for me. Also tell your friends and your family members to subscribe to my channel. That really helps. And yeah, that said, also please make sure to watch the entire thing. First things first, the only way how you can make serious amounts of money in crypto and really leverage those multipliers is to buy low and sell high, right? That's the only way you can do it. Now, what buy low, sell high actually means is to buy red and sell green, okay? So that means you should buy the dips, you should buy when everybody's capitulating, when everything is negative, when everyone's bashing crypto, and you should sell when everyone is completely greedy, right? There's this famous quote from Warren Buffett, right? Be greedy when others are fearful and vice versa. And if you apply that, you are going to do extremely well. Now, in crypto, the thing that you can do in order to make really crazy leverages and crazy multipliers is you can do two things. You either buy extremely early and you hodl on, you hodl for years, you hodl as long as you can, right? So you're actually buying low, hodling low and selling high, or you're just trying to load up on the dips, right? So you actually, whenever something crashes or whenever there's some fat news or some whatever external noise, you just buy little by little, you dollar cost average in, right? And you load up your bags and over time, you increase your holdings, you increase your positions and doing that, you automatically um, leverage your position, right? And leverage also your multipliers and your gains, right? If you believe in the long-term future of that project or that coin that you're investing in. So those are just the basic framework of how I invest, what I do, and also um, what I recommend you to think about, right? To maybe resonate with. Now, the first indicator that I want to get down to is obviously the stock to flow model. And I have made separate videos on that already around a year ago when I actually started my YouTube channel back then. Um, what the stock to flow model actually does for those who don't know, it puts into um, relation the issuance or the supply of Bitcoin with the current demand of Bitcoin, right? Or the expected demand, right? Since the supply side of Bitcoin is entirely programmed and entirely transparent and, and open, right? And clearly uh, countable and measurable, the demand side is obviously, you know, where it's really hard to, to measure and to really get a feeling for it. However, the Bitcoin stock to flow model, which was developed by Plan B, shout out to you. Um, please follow him on Twitter. He's a Bitcoiner. He's borderline maximalist, but he's very deep into Bitcoin and that's great. You know, it's a great source of information and uh, resource for, for crypto, for Bitcoin. And he developed that model, which is um, pretty accurate. I think it's the most accurate price prediction model of Bitcoin. And he's saying in his opinion, 60K was not the top um, and um, up and onward for Bitcoin, right? Now, if we zoom in here a little bit on that model, we can see that these the color of those dots is always the, um, the time, the length for the next halving, right, to cure. And whenever we flip from dark blue to red, we just had a halving, right? And if you don't know what a Bitcoin halving is, um, please get yourself familiar with it. It basically means that um, the issuance of new Bitcoins, the block reward, which is issued every 10 minutes, gets cut in half, right? So that means we have a supply shock because... Um, we have less Bitcoins thrown on the market. And if the demand remains stable or even increases, the price automatically has to increase, right? So we've seen that 
each and every time, whenever there was a halving, we've seen that the, the price skyrocketed, right? Now, what we see historically is that we usually peak when we flip from orange to yellow, right? So kind of like that's the peak signal. And we've seen that um, now in uh, 2021, right? We just flipped from red to orange and we are seeing that dot here that which is basically a monthly candle, a monthly dot here um, is, is, is significantly going down, right? So the question is now, are we going down from here and then consolidate and then have the next bull run in four or five years? Or was this just a fake out to the downside? Maybe some coordinated manipulation. Maybe it was some FUD attack or maybe some natural sell-off or whatever it was. And we're going to go up again um, somewhere towards, I think that model predicts two, three, even two, I think 200 something thousand per, per BTC even this year. And then we consolidate and crash. Um, and that is what this model actually suggests. And if we go over here on Glassnode, we actually see that this model, which is the stock to flow deflection, basically tells us, are we currently, how far off are we from the Bitcoin stock to flow model, right? And that, that model actually suggests that we are um, just beginning, right? So if you look here, for example, in July of 2017, which is one, you know, um, there was also sell off here in, in Bitcoin. And a lot of people thought the party would already be over. Bitcoin was just at $2,200. And we really had rock bottom here for the stock to flow deflection. And then we shot up um, to crazy new highs, um, almost $20,000, right? So that's almost a 10x. That's like, a, let's say 7x, 6, 7x six, um, from, from the bottom here, right? Now we're seeing actually that we're bottoming out again. And the Bitcoin price is at 37,000, right? So it's actually almost double to what it was here at the 27 peak, 2017 peak. And we are right now, that's our new low, right? Seemingly. Now the question is, can history repeat itself? Are we gonna go back up again? And if we zoom out here, uh, in here a little bit, we can see that the, bear, the bull run doesn't, didn't really start according to that model, right? According to the stock, stock to flow model, we have never really been overbought according to that model. So that's indicator number one, the Bitcoin stock to flow model, also stock to flow deflection, which tells us where do we currently stand in relation to that model. And it gives you a great insight, um, an indication, where do we stand right now? All right, so the next metrics I wanna share with you guys is the net unrealized profit and loss on Bitcoin, the NUPL. And what this basically tells is what is the current market sentiment based on that metrics, right? Um, how many unrealized profits or how many unrealized profits do we have and set that into relation. And we currently see that if we compare the current bull run that we have, um, which went on here basically according to that um, in October 22nd, 2020, when we flipped from optimism to belief, right? Only to believe, we never had any kind of euphoria stage. Um, and then for the first time, since October, 2020, in May, 2020. So, so there's like seven months later, we, for the first time went below that line and we went back to optimism, right? So we have never really been into the euphoria stage according to that model. And if we zoom back and, and look back here, historically 2017, we have been, we've dipped twice from green to, blue, to yellow, right? First time here and second time here before we went off the races. We even went down twice again to revisit those um, optimism levels. And then we even shot above the euphoria level, right? We've been there just for a few days. It was crazy back then. I remember literally everybody was FOMO buying crypto. Um, um, and Steinium was on rank 40, right? A lot of crazy things. Um, and right now we, we are, well, we have had this long, long, long belief phase um, and now for the first time, the markets are really cooling off, which is healthy in such a market environment, but we haven't had the euphoria here. That's the point. And sure, we already have those Shiba Inus right now um, since a few weeks now, but um, I think this is still going to go on for a bit longer here. I don't think that everything is going to just collapse from here. I think that we will have another crazy euphoria phase, means that um, we'll see green again and then maybe even blue on that model. And um, then things will really get wild in the crypto markets. And that's where you really need to control your emotions and be on top of the game, stick to strong fundamentals and you'll do fine, right? Have an exit strategy, have a game plan and you will do fine. Right? Okay, and finally, let's look into the Bitcoin reserve risk, which basically tells us um, the relation between 
the hodlers and the confidence of uh, Bitcoin investors and the price. And we're currently seeing that we are right now kind of like in uh, no man's land, right? We're kind of like here in the middle. We have been trending upwards. So if that would have continued into the red zone here, I think this would have probably marked the peak of the bull run. But we, we have been rejected halfway, right? And we have been going down here, which might mean that we're in a reaccumulation phase, um, which would match a lot to that um, um, coordinated sell-off narrative. And then we go back up from here, right? Into that red phase, into that red zone. And that's where we usually peak historically. You can see that with crazy peaks here. And I think that's also great vis visualization. Where do we currently stand with Bitcoin? And I wish we could also see that for Ethereum and uh, even much more metrics for Ethereum here on Glassnode, but um, they're covering mostly BTC here. Uh, according to that model, it's quite attractive to still buy um, and um, before we enter this red zone, right? So that's where you should not buy. Um, ideally, you buy in the green zone um, and you sell in the red zone. But uh, right now we're actually going pretty quickly down to that green zone. So maybe we'll touch upon it, maybe not. But yeah, we never know. We'll figure it out over the next couple of months, I guess. All right, and lastly, let's look into some uh, coins here on CoinGecko. And i um, uh, also gonna tell you what I'm buying right now, what I'm looking at, what I'm eyeing at. So first of all, let's look at a market cap, 1.7 trillion, which is quite good. 24 hour trading volume, 250 billion, not bad. Bitcoin dominance went back up to 40.9%, ETH at 18.3%. 18, 18 and the ETH prices, guys, this is beautiful. The ETH gas prices are back to normal, kind of, right? They're back to, you know, at least people can afford to transact. Um, I've actually made some transactions today as well. And it's, uh, it's, it's good. It feels good to not have to pay $200 to make a trade right on uniswap so that's great bitcoin has calmed down to 38k ethereum at 2.8k um and guys those prices are not even bad right like everyone's talking like oh my god uh, it's crashing so hard like guys sitting here in may of 2021 and saying that 38k for bitcoin and we're talking about a bear market 2800 ETH and we're talking about potentially being in a bear market. I don't know, guys. Cardano holding incredibly strong, $1.74. Dogecoin, I think a lot of people made a lot of money there, but there's inc increased volatility. I'm not touching that personally. I'm not a big fan, um, but it's they have Elon. They have Elon, they have TikTok, they have Wall Street bets. So um, it's hard to bet against this. But I think over the longer run, um, this is not, not the best play uh, on a technical level, right? There's no real tech innovation, development, nothing the like. And if you compare that, for example, which is absolutely nuts, that Dogecoin even has a higher evaluation, double the evaluation of Polkadot, right? So Polkadot would be the first thing from that list um, after Ethereum, right? I, I still believe, by the way, in the, in the Ethereum flipping, I think... Ethereum is going to overtake Bitcoin. So actually the Bitcoin flipping, not the ETH flipping. But yeah, so uh, Polkadot, one of those coins at $20, $23. It has quite a good market cap, but I think it can go to three digits. So that's kind of like, I'm, I'm still holding some dot. Um, I traded a lot of them for Atom, um, but um, I'm still holding, of course, um, uh, some dot, right? Like quite good amount of dot. So uh, I'm excited for that. I think they're going to do extremely well, um, especially since people don't really know exactly what they do, like mainstream retail, but also institutions, funds, right? Um, it's still a bit early for Polkadot, one of the interoperability projects um, and also next generation smart contract platforms, but um, it's, uh, it's at a good price right now. So might be interesting to start doing research on. ICP, I think I'm going to do a sole video on that um, in the near future. Um, I've been uh, reading and, 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 and learning about them since late last year. Um, I heard of them actually when I was living in China in 2018. They wanted to make an ICO back then, but then the bear market came and they postponed it and they did it now, right? So it's at $138, which is completely nuts. 17 billion market cap, 64 billion fully diluted. 
and they were trading at five hundred dollars here, four five hundred dollars at the launch, which is absolutely crazy. Um, I think this is not correct. This is probably for the IOU, but um, uh, it is it is a huge project. Um, but again, I'm going to cover that separately. I don't hold any ICP. Um, I didn't get into the ICO, unfortunately. But yeah, pretty cool. Polygon ranked 11. This, this thing has been off the books. Uh, I, I think buying it right now is not the smartest decision, even though I think today, was it Mark Cuban or somebody announced that he's going to invest? But this chart is, this is on the moon. This thing is on the moon. And it crashed really, really hard with when everything crashed, but it recovered the fastest. It's almost back to all-time highs again, which is crazy. So, um, from, so from the top 10, what I find interesting right now is um, uh, Polkadot, but I got my Polkadot position stacked. So I'm not really um, interested to buy more DOT. I also think they're not, I think Cosmos is superior to Polkadot on a tech level or also on an ecosystem level by far um, because Polkadot doesn't really have an ecosystem. Internet computer, ICP, previously Definity, by the way, interesting project um, might still be overvalued based on that year, years long um, uh, launch, basically. Now, if we go a bit uh, down here, the list, right, there's a lot of good projects. But let me just get, let me just go straight to the point, guys. Let me just go straight to Atom, my favorite coin, 14, below $15. I don't need to talk much about this, I guess. This is an absolute no-brainer. They even came out now and um, have um, uh, interest or uh, kind of like a partnership, not a partnership, but interest from the Han Bank, um, a Korean bank that is also working on central bank digital currencies. They are proposing one for the Korean central bank. So this might be really interesting, right? And Cosmos is almost at a tenth of the evaluation of Polkadot, which doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't add up to me. Um, and this uh, with Gravity Dex around the corner. Gravity Dex is the first cross-chain Dex, the new home of Atom built on the Cosmos Hub. This thing is going to go wild and it's going to drive a lot of value for and utility for Atom for the coin, right? It's been suffering a lot with that crash, um, but that's good for me because I, I'm, 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 I can't have enough Atom. I'm still buying that actually. And I'm even thinking to buy it with Fiat. So I haven't bought crypto with fiat um, since February, actually. Um, I think I only bought twice in 2021 uh, crypto with fiat, but um, I'm borderline aping in again. So uh, until now I've just taken what I have, um, you know, on the sidelines. Um, I bought the dip a little bit too early. I didn't buy like, because I think this went to below $10, which is totally nuts. But um, yeah, Atom, Cosmos, Definitely something to keep researching. And you're in the right uh, source here because I'll talk a lot about Cosmos. And you can just stay here and scroll through my videos and uh, learn everything about IBC, Gravity Dex, core developers, Jack Sampolin have been on my channel. And um, yeah, learn about it. The next coin that I find criminally undervalued is Algorand. And Algorand is a huge project, massive ecosystem. I just made a full coverage on them as well a few weeks ago. It's time to follow up again, actually. And I forgot to include them also into my green coins for Elon list because Algorand is actually a very green coin. Novel proof of stake consensus algorithm that scales without having to compromise security nor decentralization, right? So um, you can see the stance on the website. Obviously it's still in its infancy in its early stage, but it's actually pretty, pretty established for that, right? Being such a young project, it's uh, pretty much established, especially the coin, um, but yeah. Uh, Algorand at $1, in my opinion, is a steal. Looking to buy more here. I mean, this thing is this thing is going wild. They've already also partnership with the Marshall Islands for the central bank digital currency design there. So um, a lot of cool things. Like they're active in all the ecosystems, right? NFTs, DeFi. Um, they just had their first coin or, or token to launch on Algorand. Um, so there's also going to be a lot of DeFi there. Um, and CBDCs, which is what I'm extremely excited about. Another coin that I've been uh, not been covering yet, but I'm holding since a while, quite quite a while, um, is Terra Luna, and they got ex entirely slammed from that dump. Um, huge sell-off, huge, 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 huge crash. They've been around 20, 15 to 20 bucks forever, well, not forever, but since March, <laughs> which is kind of forever in crypto. 
and then they crashed free fall down to what was it four dollars absolutely crazy but it's a huge project it's a basically a DeFi market a money market for um for for a lot of things right they connected also mirror protocol to it which uh, is a derivatives market and um you can do a lot of things there. There's a kind of like a exchange building as well. So you can directly trade on the Terra station. They have a web app integration. Um, you can um, stake UST, which is a stable coin built on top of Terra um, at I think 17, 18% APY, um, which is crazy. But yeah, Terra Luna, another project to keep an eye on. They have 2.5 million users, or I think nearly 3 million users by now in Korea. Um, the founder is actually Korean, I guess, but um, they have a huge use case there with um, one of the largest uh, mobile payment applications in Korea. So, and Luna is actually integrated there. So that's pretty cool. And um, yeah, so definitely a project to check out, to keep an eye on. Also building a Cosmos SDK, by the way. So that's a Cosmos project. Next coin. And you guys know that Heather Hashgraph, absolutely criminally undervalued. Um, ranked 54 now it's making its way to the top 50 i think it belongs to the top 10 26.8 cents um it didn't really crash hard during that dip um which you can even see here in the chart like there's no crazy wick down um but it's been going sideways slash bearish since march when we uh, struggled to get above 40 cents when when that elon debate started with the energy thing hedera was one of the pump coins that went through the roof uh, 40 50 percent um, immediate uh, reaction to Elon's uh, tweets but um, um, then the crash came all the fat news China whatever so I'm holding a large bag of H bar actually I think this is this is one of my strongest bets and again I don't have a crystal ball I don't it can go to zero it can go to two cents it can every anything can happen in crypto right but um, I like the technology. I've read a lot about it. I've watched a lot of uh, content also from the founders. They're super active, extremely active, both of them. Uh, the community is incre incredibly dedicated and committed. There's a huge ecosystem um, already built, Dragon Glass, which is basically the ether scan for, for the Hashgraph, um, for, for Hedera Hashgraph. And uh, you can see all the network stats there. So check that out. Check out all their... Uh, projects that are built on Hedera. Check out their partnerships, IBM, Google, um, Boeing, Tata Communications, and most recently Chainlink, the first Web3 company, Chainlink Labs joined the Hedera Hashgraph Governing Council. And that means now um, very close collaboration between one of the largest, most successful crypto projects in the world and one of the to be top 10 pro crypto projects in the world. So I think that's a great mix. And um, plus they have the whole CBDC thing going on, right? With the Shin Han Bank, another Korean, actually the largest Korean bank, even bigger than the Han Bank. And um, the Shin Han Bank is also partner of the Bank of uh, Korea, right? So they're collaborating with um, uh, Hedera Hashgraph because the Shin Han Bank is also a governing council member there. And um, together with LG, the Shin Han Bank is actually proposing a CBDC platform for the Bank of Korea, for the Central Bank of Korea. And LG is also a Herder Hashgraph government council member. So if you count one plus one, it might be that, you know, Hedera is, is considered to be the backbone of the um, CBDC for, um, for Korea. And if it's not Hedera, well, maybe the Han Bank on Cosmos, they're also in the pipeline. So <sighs> it's good to be diversified. Now, my last uh, coin here on that list, because uh, I don't want to make this too lengthy, this video either, is IrisNet. Uh, Iris, one of my hidden, hidden gems, 8.7 cents, absolutely screwed with that dump, sub 100 mil market cap. If you look for riskier um, cryptocurrency that also potentially has more upward potential, this might be a good one for you uh, to start researching on, right? It hasn't really moved. Um, it's still in a kind of like low liquidity range. It's um, listed on Binance, however, as well as Gate.io and Hobby. And what Iris is, is it's also um, built on the Cosmos SDK. So it's a Cosmos ecosystem project. And it's uh, one of the predominant backbones for the development of the blockchain service network in China. So this is huge, in my opinion, because China is huge. And 
Um, I've lived there long enough. I, I've researched a lot about the blockchain service network. I encourage you to do that as well, because if you see what companies are involved in that, giant com telecommunications companies, they're actually trying to build also the physical infrastructure, right? Telecommunication um, uh, stations, right? For the blockchain economy. These guys are ahead of the game and Arisnet uh, built this platform called Arata for this specific use case, right? And uh, they have been chosen to, to become the interoperability layer powered by basically Cosmos technology. So very interesting stuff. They also get support from Tendermint the, um, and a lot of big players also in China. That's why they also got listed on Binance, right? Um, so very interesting stuff here to keep an eye on, um, uh, but definitely not something to go blindly all in, right? Yeah, this is what I'm buying. I'm not telling you that you should buy this. I'm just saying this is what I am buying, what I have bought and what I keep stacking, okay? Um, I haven't came across any crypto YouTuber who is a certified financial advisor. Um, so always keep that in mind, guys. We're just sharing our personal research results, our personal opinions and views on the space. And I just love doing that, actually, to be honest. Just love, you know, creating content, creating videos, because I, I, I get a lot of positive feedback. I really appreciate all of you guys. Um, hope you are safe. And um, let me know what you think of my list. What do you think of my coins? What do you think of my views of my rationale here? Am I missing something? Am I overlooking something? Um, are we going to zero? Is China banning crypto again? Tell me what's on your mind. And I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>